all year and even last year, one of the things I committed myself to was lessening myself, involving myself in other people's issues and taking on those issues as if they were my own, as if I wanted to be somebody else's savior. Um, I found myself going through this so many times because it always led me to a place where I almost was overwhelmed or I became angry at the person that I was initially aiming to help because uh, someone's resistance to actually taking the feedback that they seem as though they were reaching for or the simple fact that I was just always participating in the issues for them. But then when I was going through my things, I felt as though I had to handle them myself. And so one of my favorite stories that I like to always go to to kind of reflect on my life or you know, books, shall I say, is The Agony and the Ecstasy because it talks about some of the struggles that Michelangelo went through as an artist um, from a young standpoint up into an older standpoint. Ideally, you got to understand, that's why it's important to have boundaries. You know, one of my favorite parts of this, the book, of The Agony and the Ecstasy with Michelangelo is when he has to basically have a conversation with the brother of Lorenzo de Medici. Um, he pulls him into his room or his lodge in the castle and he says, listen, um, you know, I need you to do this sculpture painting of my wife for me. I've been thinking about this. I need it done within a certain time period. And so Michelangelo is, of course, he's flattered at first and he's honored, but then he initially thinks about it like, you know, it's such an important task and I'd rather not do that. I'd rather do something that's more safer because if I create this sculpture and if it's flawed in any aspect, not only will I feel embarrassed, but it would also be a misrepresentation of royalty. So I don't want to do the task. The thing about Michelangelo is that he got, became furious, he became fired up once the prince had told him, no, uh, you had to do it or it was a consequence. And that's one thing about Michelangelo throughout the book, you realize he's very, he got strong beliefs. He's very committed to what he believes in. And so, you know, he said, no, I'm not doing it. And then he walks out, right? You know, in the midst of him walking out, you ever did something at school? Like, for instance, you you committed to something, you and the teacher got into it, and then, um, Somehow you wind up uh, walking out the class, right? And now you're thinking about the afterthought of you walking out of class. Like, damn, what is it going? What's going to happen? They're going to call my mother and things like that. So Michelangelo went through the same sort of mental complex where he was like, yo, I wonder what's going to happen. They're going to kick me out of here. They might even do some physical harm to me. However, Michelangelo stood on it. He went back to his room. He actually started packing up like, man, I'm going to deal with whatever comes my way, right? And in the midst of that, he heard a knock at the door subtly. Moments after Lorenzo Di Medici entered, right? So now he like, damn, the guy who gave me the opportunity is here. So now his mind is racing. You know, he's becoming a little nerved. And so Michelangelo, he still stands there with honor and dignity. So Lorenzo Di Medici comes in. And the, the awesome thing about it is that he came in and he was like, listen, I understand that you are frustrated. I understand. He was empathetic. He's telling him like, yeah, I understand that you didn't feel like you can do that piece. He said, you know, and I respect you for that. He said, listen, you'll still have a stay here. Don't worry about packing your stuff. Unpack your stuff. You're good in my book here. However, the only thing I request of you is that you apologize to my brother. Now, you got to understand that the reason why he even wanted that apology is because of the hierarchy that they had within society. He didn't want that to be a slippery slope. But the mere fact that he conducted himself with honor and dignity himself in regard to dealing with somebody who wasn't in a higher position in the hierarchy showed a lot about his character. I think the greater part of the story that I, I really appreciate is the fact that not only did he stand up for what he believed, but he was willing to, you know, accept any consequence that came with it. And I think that's life. A lot of times we do things and we're not willing to accept the consequence that comes with it. Even if it's our own belief system and we feel in our hearts and we know within our guts, like, man, this is just how I feel. This is how strong I feel about it. A lot of people won't take the initiative to do so. And my advice to anybody that's watching my video today is take the initiative to do so. If you feel as though something isn't comfortable to you, whether it's somebody's asking you to do something or somebody that uh, needs something from you in any aspect, you have to be strong enough to be able to make a decision or choice to say, listen, I respect the fact that you came to me with this, but I'm not I'm not able to deal with this. And I'm actually not really well willing to deal with this, too, because that's another aspect of it. And last but not least, stay chiseled.